Did you know that the Truman Show exists in TFT? Well, don't believe me? Nah, I probably wouldn't either to be fair, but it's true. Did you know that there are also more than just fortune cash out easter eggs in TFT? Oh, and there'll be a small content update at the end of the video, so stick around for that. To kick things off, we're going to talk about the unconfirmed easter eggs that may or may not exist. One is Yone, where if you do a certain animation for a long period of time, you get a spatula. But I'll take that one with a healthy, healthy grain of salt. We put in an easter egg, if you do this for 46 minutes, it'll give you an actual spatula. The most likely unconfirmed one to exist is Long Distance Pals back in set 9.5. Rumor has it if you match Graves and Twisted Fate with the buff, then there's a secret voice line. But this so far has proved impossible to find. Also, while we're here, in set 9.5 they use the Howling Abyss shopkeeper for some item choices, which is kind of cool. Uh, there is also an unconfirmed easter egg in the Count Spatula Arena in set 5, but again, impossible to find and we don't even know what it was. Then there are the fortune cash outs, and I know we said there were more than just this, but I'd be amiss not to talk about some of them. And this started all the way back in 4.5 with the double component caches, and also the one of every item caches. But over the years, that has slowly morphed into different iterations. For instance, recently we had 9 fortune set 11 giving you a tree that gave you infinite money, and set 2 with training dummies in set 10. Other notable ones were Golem Swarm in set 12, which was kind of cool. And there were other traits such as Lagoon giving you random junk at 1000 stacks that was basically just fish bones. And set 10 8 bit would give you infinite gold at the high score. And then you have now in set 12 with Poro snacks in Sugarcraft when you hit the, the big cake. There was also T Hex, which was the first one to do a radiant conversion cash out. And speaking of T Hex, if it killed Baron, it got. Baron's head in its inventory, which was awesome. But then there were the other ones as well, like Yordle Lord in set 6, which no one knew about until PvE, and it just randomly happened, and everyone was just like, wow, I can't believe that's even in the game. It was a, a lovely little thing that no one expected. And then there were the ones that were not so cool in the moment, but kind of cool in hindsight, which was the Fortune Easter Egg back in set 4. And if you won with 6 Fortune, sometimes you would get nothing. Except you kind of did. You got a boot on your head. It was non-functional. It was entirely cosmetic. But it just goes to show what Riot can do sometimes. But seriously, can we get some of these like sort of customizable cosmetics for our little legend? Like, how cool would that be? What about little legend Easter eggs? Well, Starmore would occasionally eat Teemo if you emoted enough times. What about champions? Yasuo in set 4 and 9 would sometimes flash his Mastery 7 if he got enough kills in a 1v4 or more. <laughs> <laughs> Rennington in set 9 would perform his EQ combo if he cast while holding RFC. Ezreal's ability in set 8 would change its name with the hero augment from sabotage to a trick I taught myself. In set 2, if a Poro crossed Braum on the Froyord Arena, it would receive a moustache. Heimer in set 9 would become a 4 star if you 3 starred him and played Poppy alongside him, and if that Poppy was a 3 star, you would get double turrets. In set 10, if you 3 starred Jin, he would become a 4 star because, you know, of course he would. What does he do? What does he do? <sighs> Wait, what? What the fuck? My god! And even Nomsi in set 7 would sometimes get to a 4 star if you fed Nomsi enough. Some of the more interesting ones that new players probably won't have ever heard of is the FPO Little Legend. And I mean, this wasn't an easter egg and nor did it exist, it was just a placeholder for when the image didn't show up, still it was kinda cool. Speaking of placeholders, Abyssal Mars also used to appear occasionally, but it was just a bugged icon for an item. In set 1, an evil Poro will sometimes appear when dragging your shop, and no one knows why that started or why that stopped. But this was also before everyone was dragging the shop to buy units. In set 6, they gave one health to Victor and took one away from Jace to match what was happening in the show. And sometimes Riot would just do things randomly for fun or to hint at a new set. For instance, 6.5 had golden eggs to hint at Dragonlands coming. And in 8.5, Urgot had his Star Guardian skin. And they also added portals to hint at set 9 coming to TFT. 
the, most recently the triple crown interaction that gave you infinite gold. What about ones that are slightly controversial? Now, if you're a Riot employee, I really want you to prove me wrong here because this is kind of weird, but the Tiger Market Arena was marketed with an Easter egg. But here are two clips. Can you tell me the difference between the two? Yeah, so the difference was a gong sound, which is fine. But is that a real Easter egg when it only activates when you have the arena and an insanely expensive little legend? And this was back when there was no pity system, so some people spent hundreds of dollars to get this, and that was their reward for the Easter egg. I, I don't know. That one, that one leaves a bit of a taste in my mouth, but it's fine. Because they made more than made up for it with this arena, which is the beach arena. Now watch this. Did you see it? No, I don't think you did. What if we zoomed out? See it now? See that door? Yeah, look at that. It's the Troman show in TFT. How cool is that? It does make me wonder if there are other secret Easter eggs hidden in ultra wide monitors. If someone is out there with one of them, please go and find out and let me know. Before we get to the content update, I just want to shout out Alan, who basically did all of the research and all of the, all, basically everything for this video. Like without him, this video wouldn't be possible. This is a collaboration with him. So thank you, Alan. You are the best and I really appreciate your support. And also all of the rest of my members as well. You guys are legends. Uh, as for the content update, I am probably not going to be doing the 0.5 sets because if 4.5 is anything to go by, uh, there's not really so much interest there. And these videos take a lot of work and it's very hard for me to justify doing, doing these videos. Um, for one, when I'm not enjoying them, um, they they are exhausting to do. They can take days, like they can take weeks. It, they took a long time, and I am finding that I don't get excited to make them. And so I want to move away from it and do content that I really enjoy. So I will be going forward doing a lot more arcane related stuff, um, particularly in a similar style to the video that I did previously where I went through Klager's perspective and the next video will be on Heimerdinger's perspective. Um, go and check that video out, I think it's quite fun. I think it's a very funny video, very entertaining and I will be doing more of stuff like that just for a little bit until the year anniversary of set 10. When, when the year anniversary set 10 comes in, I will be doing set 10, so yeah. Thank you for supporting me, I appreciate it immensely and have a great day. Oh